Hi, it's Liz from Lohas, Canada. It is May the 25th, 2020. So I am located in Parksville, BC, which is on the west coast of Canada. And this is a podcast about knitting and sewing and making different things. So it's almost the end. So it's the end of May, almost June. So I've been outside planting vegetables and eating some of them like radishes and stuff. So it is supposed to get hotter in the next couple weeks, so it'll be nice for summer. So I don't have too much on the knitting front. I am still waiting for some knitting needles to come in so I'm able to start the wood-like shawl. But I am almost done the uh, Skinder Deer skirt. So I have run out of the wool. And this is the Eco, Eco Plus, Eco Plus Hemp. Um, from Cascade Yarns and so that's the top. This is inside out and I'm almost out of it. I did bind it off once I was out of the uh, yarn. I was holding it with that sock weight and it was just a too short. I mean I did probably need another ball of that yarn to make it more of a medium which I probably only had about a small or an extra small. So I'm just adding the black to the bottom. I also, it also flares out so uh, I do need to make sure I uh, turn it over so I do sew it down so it folds in and has a better shape. It is quite flowy, especially at the back, so I don't know if I keep making it longer then it'll actually, I don't know, pull in a little bit or maybe I need to do some sewing afterwards just to manipulate the fabric to have the shape that I wanted. But it does go over my hips and it does go all the way down, not not even close to my knee, so I'm going to have to figure that out and, and play with it. It does have a good length though, as you can tell. But it, yeah, it it might be nice as well, like especially in the winter time with tights. So that might be something. It is wool and hemp, and then I'm also holding wool sock yarn, so it is a heavier weight than than just something light and airy. Now that we're coming up into summer, or I guess almost almost in summer. So I think in the next week or two I should be finished this just depending on how long I want it. I don't have any more of the blue left so either I'll have to, if I don't like the length still, I'll have to switch to another color or I'm going to have to, I don't know, be on the lookout for some more of the Eco Plus Hemp wool and uh, I just would want one ball so it's not like I want to buy huge quantity of stuff just to get that free shipping. Though things are slowly opening up more so that is a possibility that I might be able to run to the yarn store and see if they have it or call ahead. So then the other knitting thing I have is the vest. I did put buttons onto it. I was able to go to a store that had some buttons, matching buttons. I do have buttons but I haven't matched them all so I don't know what sets I have. I still am looking for some videos on some slide pockets, so some slanted pockets in English. So I'm still watching those other ones, trying to piece it together on how I'm supposed to do that. So to make the buttonholes on these, I tried on the machine with my sample piece and because it's too thick uh, pieces folded over, it just did not do very well with the machine. Maybe if I had better technique or something I could do it a bit better, but it just really got lost. So what I ended up doing is just doing them by hand. It was a lot easier. I just placed pins around so I had some marking and I placed a pin through it so that I could go over back and forth and actually see my stitch markers. Otherwise they just kind of disappeared and melt into this wool fabric once it gets going. So if I didn't have that pin that went across that I was stitching on then I wouldn't have had that direction so so I'm happy that the buttons are on I just need to get the pockets and then that project will be fully complete so I want to start researching some other products that I can make that isn't with wool that I can wear when I'm running in a running shoe so I do have that one pair of socks that are the bamboo 
that has a high percentage of elasticity and some other components to it. Those ones have been working really well. My only thing is that they are a blue-black sock, so they have gone into the washing machine. So on my next pair, when I start researching of whatever content I'm going to get, I will be using some sort of more brightly colored thing so it doesn't get lost in the washing machine and I can kind of treat them a little bit nicely and not put them in the dryer. <laughs> So that's all I have for the knitting front. So let's move on to some sewing. So what I am wearing is a top. It's a crop top. It's actually not for me. I'll show you the back. It's for my sister. I'm still doing a couple other patterns. Uh, I'm going to have to figure out what I'm going to do with this neck. I want her to try it on so I can make the adjustments because she is smaller in the shoulders uh, than me and so I just want to the bottom isn't done up so I can make any of those adjustments I also feel like the collar is a little bit too close to the neck I do like the round collar so I think if I maybe bring it down and also possibly put it in the shoulders a little bit will actually help make this not so scrunchy up here because of the darts and everything so so that one is a nice easy make uh, as long as I can get the adjustments going and that's still from this McCall's 2742 so I really want to try to get the most of my 25 cents from these patterns um, just kind of the most of the money that I can just to utilize all the different techniques the structures I would like to make this in like a longer I think it's supposed to more sit at my hips rather than maybe my below above my belly button it's perfect for my sister but I would like to make it into a longer one and also for me at least around in the shoulders a bit more I was also thinking it might be nice for just to give it a different look having it as a v-neck or even just playing with some of the darts but I do like that uh, construct of the back and but my only thing is with the back it does seem on the picture so I'm doing view a it does seem like the little triangles are uh, are a little bit more into the body and mine are definitely just like just a little bit from the side so I don't know why even if it was further down it went because my hips go out it wouldn't be flared like that as well so it, I would have even less little triangles so that that is something to continuously play with. I did fix also the green one that I did in view B. My only other concerns is this is linen and the other green one that I did was linen as well. And so you do the front one color and then you're supposed to, you can do a contrast color on the back, especially with the green one just because it this one uh, kind of you can tell which way it goes, but with the green one you can really flip it either way. So I don't know if it's supposed to be a lighter material maybe on the other side and that will give it a little bit more softness. I haven't top stitched this one at all but I did on the green one and it is really nice and it's a little bit too thick maybe almost for the summer like I would like maybe just one one layer just of the linen and then I was thinking maybe cotton on the other side but I don't really know they I mean their textures are very different and the weaves as well so I find linen moves a lot more than the cotton so it it might be interesting to play with and trying to figure out some sort of combination that will work well together that's just a little bit more or maybe like a lightweight linen on one side and then a heavier linen on the other or my option is to try to figure out, I have the pieces, but the pattern, the way it's sewn up, or they ask you to sew it up, is so that there's exposed uh, seams on the other side so that you're not surging it. I did surge it on the linen because linen frays quite a bit and it was already fraying. Uh, so maybe just keeping those raw edges but just ha figuring out how to con construct it a bit different so that I wouldn't need the separate layer on the other side. So. So last week I showed you this top. It's like a tube top, but it had straps and that was going to be my sister's birthday present, but it was too big for her and I ended up doing something completely different. I don't know why. I just kind of figure out what I wanted to do. This one has buttons and it's more of a tube top but I could still put straps on it. I think for this one though it is still too too big for her and with these uh, it puffs out too much at the sides when, once they're too big. Uh, 
So this one actually fits me. I don't know exactly how to do tailoring yet. I should probably figure out how to do stuff on myself before I do it on other people. But it was a really good experiment to figure that out. So I'll keep this one as like a prototype. I can maybe figure out what I want to do. I could also let this bottom out and then put some sort of other construct material because I do like this pattern. I can add the straps again for myself and then have something at the bottom that's different to make it a bit longer. It's just I would never for myself. That's just my not my style. Um, but my sister's style, I made her a green one instead. So it looks super small, but because of the elastic that's in it, oh yeah, I have pins in the straps. So on the original one that I had that I was taking measurements from, I measured the straps of where they sat on her and they were different than where they sat on me just because of their shoulder width and then also on the back width. So because I don't even have a mannequin that fits me properly, uh, I don't have one that fits smaller, of course. So with the elastic being the, how stretchy it is, I'll get her to try it on. I've pinned in the straps and then I can adjust them before I finally sew them down. So that will be one. It looks super tiny, but this one doesn't fit me. It's about, it, this one is a small. So I'm more of a medium and my sister is more of a small. Not a small kids, but just a regular small. It looks super tiny though. <laughs> just a little tiny thing. So my other thing that I just started working on the other night has been the corset. So... Now, I'll try this on and show you. It is not boned, so it's going to lie a bit funny. So I was watching one of their videos on Foundations Revealed, and they're saying duck canvas is a little bit too loose of a weave. If you use, like, artisan canvas, it actually has a much tighter weave. So I think that's my another problem is just that the weave. But I wanted to understand the construction of it. Uh, the pattern is by Bra Maker Supply, and so this is the Freedom Corset 1407. It's not like a historical one at all. It is more like a, a bustier than a corset. It kind of reminds me a little bit of Superwoman, <laughs> but uh, I think with the right material and just some tweaking, it can look less like Superwoman style and just more like a, a flattering uh, style. So I'm using I'm doing the full coverage view. I would like to also do the underbust just to get the construction of it. I also was a bit confused about the instructions. Uh, it is not. This is not like a take it right from the beginner sewing thing. It is definitely like, I was like, okay, well, now I have these six pieces. What do I do with them? And there's no like, even though it's really actually simple, like you just join piece one to two to three to four to five and you just keep going down that way. But I was like, do I cut out six pieces? Do I cut out 12? And so I was asked, asking on the Facebook group and they were like, no, you cut out like 12 pieces. So that six pieces is just for one side and you still have to do the other side. Once I cut out those 12 pieces, I just sewed it and then figure out where the matching points were and kind of did it like that. So, so the busk isn't properly sewn in yet. So I did sew it on the one side, but I haven't sewn the up in the bottom and I haven't sewn this in either for the other side just because I wasn't too sure exactly if I was doing that right. I wasn't, for some reason, this instruction book doesn't have all the instructions. It, it's like you're supposed to know certain things. Uh, it also doesn't tell you anything about adjustments or anything. It's just kind of like this is the pattern that's it's gonna fit you that way. So it was just a bit confusing. So I definitely um, watched a bunch of articles and been listening to lots of those uh, videos that they do on the replays. So this isn't like how you're supposed to properly do it. I'm just trying to understand the concept of it. So I just left the edges like that. And then this is the pattern uh, wants two pieces of fabric. So you wouldn't have the normally have these boning channels in uh, separate. So I just did one inch strips and sewed them uh, down onto it so that I didn't have to have another piece of fabric because that would be something else to 
figure it out where I, right now I'm just trying to learn the construction of it, how to piece it together, how to shape it to my body and then get that going. So I also did the eyelids. So I, that was something I wanted to figure out. This is not lacing at all. That's supposed to be for it. It's just all that I had. And so I did have an eyelet maker with my cam presser. So I just wanted to figure out how I would do that. If I, I did put another piece, they didn't recommend this, but I have used my eyelets on leather before and with the leather arm guard for archery. And I had two pieces, it was pretty thin leather, but it's, I thought, it should still hold up so I put that through and within the first time I did archery it was starting to already rip and some of the eyelets one of the eyelets especially where you were like fastening it here and pulling on it it was coming out so I did notice on a lot of the other archery bands people had and purchased it was at least like two leathers thick or sometimes even three and sometimes those leathers were really really thick so my little leather wouldn't have done that so I was just also thinking oh okay well maybe I needed to put another channel here so what I did so there will be a bone here and there'll be a bone here not right now but there will be and then what I did is I just cut another half an inch strip and I just put it in the center this piece is folded over so that the eyelet would be going through three pieces of fabric just to give it a little bit more strength so I just wanted to see and play with that because that was something uh, that I definitely noticed with the arm guard. I do have other eyelet tape but I really wanted on my practice one especially to figure out how I can do it and they are not straight or perfect by any means uh, but I just wanted to play with it and figure out and if there was a special way to do it. And then also with the eyelet tape, it's actually a separate, you know, they're on a separate tape. So it's not pulling just on the fabric. So that's what I was really worried about. I went to the hardware store yesterday to look for some sap straps. But yesterday it was Sunday and the hardware stores were closed. A lot of things in my town were actually closed. I also need to I guess put in an order for some synthetic whale boning and kind of get onto that journey of using a little bit better materials and I probably want to get some more of these uh, busks uh, so it's just metal on these metals. I do have these other busks that I also got. This is another type of busk that I bought and I didn't know what it was so I just ended up buying it because it kind of looks neat and I thought that would be interesting. So I was listening to a video and I think Barbara on Foundations Reveal, Barbara was saying these ones are really good if you have a little bit of like a belly because so, it has a curve. So it curves into the front side and then curves out so that it actually tucks in your belly a bit. So. Uh, that's kind of interesting, but like looking at this and then looking at this, this is just one straight piece where this one is quite large on each side. So it, I, if I would to use this, I would have to adjust this quite a bit, adjust the pattern. So I need to go get some more of these eventually. And I guess the only place I know where they are is online like everything else. All right, I am all done up, <laughs> so I will show you, Ooh. and it is looking, let me just move, so I don't have any boning in it, that is why it looks very different, I need to put a lot of boning channels, I need to obviously fix this busk area. I don't have any of the cording on the top, obviously. And I'll show you the back. And I don't have any lacing, but I can also go quite a bit tighter. So I just got back from the hardware store and I got some zap straps and I just put them in. So I'll show you what the corset looks like just with the boning or zap straps on it. Uh, obviously this is not like baleen or synthetic whale boning so it's not going to be as accurate but that's what that's what we got here so it looks way smoother just with boning 
I feel like this could be a lot tighter. But so I think it looks a lot better. I think it still needs some adjustments. Uh, it also needs cording on the top, but that's going to be the next stages once I figure out some of these adjustments. But um, yeah, it doesn't look doesn't look too too bad. So I don't know about you guys, but I did this week have a little bit of a like what's my life's purpose moments. I don't know if you're having many of those as well. And especially because making corsets, making knitted things aren't like a, an essential thing, right? Like growing food for me is an essential thing. So, but I'm not growing it for other people right now. I'm doing it for myself. Masks for me, you know, you go through those phases, like masks were like an essential phase being like, oh my gosh, like we're gonna run out of masks. And then depending on where you are at this point, we're not. And then just kind of having those life purpose moments at a time. But this kind of, last couple of weeks have been kind of like, I'm not too really too sure what this life life purpose is just to like keep on sewing and, and making things I guess but is that really beneficial to to a life purpose I don't know so it's just been I think ups and downs for a little bit this week trying to figure that out and not hasn't really given me motivation to finish things is that really necessary <laughs> but I think it, it's definitely a different mind frame and just like that we're continu continuously learning skills and that's kind of what came up for me and just being like hey you need to go back into jogging and back into getting outside more and and kind of figuring out what your life purpose is and um and you know the sewing journey is a part of that life purpose and sometimes you just kind of have to keep going down whatever rabbit hole you're going down even though you can't see how it applies to what you're going to what you're doing at the moment so you know it's like corsets aren't a life purpose but with those skills and what you're doing it leads to other things and with this process i think that's my my main problem with a lot of things is like I'm always about kind of <clears throat> looking at the big picture of what's our end goal rather than like the journey upon it. So I think that's one of the things for myself is that sometimes I just look at like what is the big picture and I feel like those macro things and I forget about those micro things that it is a like a life long journey and it's uh, trying to figure out those skills so we can enhance upon it and I might not know how it's maybe necessary or applies into my life right now or what the purpose is, but it's something I'm passionate about at this moment with everything going on. So it's kind of like redirecting my focus. And it is, of course, it's like a mindset. It's a mental frame that I'm having this mental dilemma of you know, and I, I go through this, I think I've gone through this process like many times in my life. So it's just kind of going through that journey and a lot of things have slowed down for me as well and it's just like, oh, and it's taking me a little bit of a process to get through them and I'm, I'm realizing now too that, you know, with that process a lot of other things have come up and it's just been like a lot of realizations this last couple of weeks. So, um, yeah, it's got me back on the sewing mojo and, and getting everything going again. So motivation is kicked back in, I think, especially with the nicer weather. I hope you guys are all, you know, doing well, doing your thing, trying to figure out what you're doing. And, um, I think because we don't have as many options as we once did, it's kind of interesting uh, that, uh, that we're just trying to figure it out and that's okay and I think we go through this throughout life trying to figure out stuff maybe not to this extent uh, but anyhow I'm going to take some pictures and get some more feedback on this and then I will um, eventually cut these zip zap straps down because they're now poking into me and it's not very comfortable but I wanted to get that and then I'll uh, learn how to do 
the binding and the front part, how to do that correctly. I also think I have a feeling with the pattern, maybe I'm missing a bone. Maybe I'm supposed to have a bone channel at the front. So I don't know. I'll have to have a look again at the pattern, but yeah, just keep on the journey. I'll see you guys later. Bye.